What does the metaverse look like in 10 years? I don't know. Let me tell you why. Because right now we don't know what it is. Well, the first thing to understand about the metaverse is it doesn't exist yet. There are several layers to the metaverse. People over the, all over the world will be able to take advantage of new technologies so that they can live in that metaverse. This puts incredible pressure on society because society's already, let's say, adopted technology. So the metaverse will shape us, but is there a way for us to shape it? Not at the moment. Oh, yes. <laughs> I am Sylvie Delacroix, a professor in law and ethics at the University of Birmingham. My name is Toshi Anders Hu. I'm the director of the Emerging Media Lab at Institute for the Future. I'm Amy Webb, chief executive officer of the Future Today Institute. I'm Joe Rosinski, a technologist and futurist at Thomson Reuters. The metaverse is something that we're seeing evolve very quickly. We're already there, right? In some ways, uh, the WebEx meetings or the Teams meetings or the Zoom calls that we've had during the pandemic has brought us to the, to the direction and led us in the path that we're kind of living virtually already. It's a, really just a concept. It's really a container. And I think for folks like maybe Mark Zuckerberg, the idea of metaverse is an evolution of his existing social media company. For others, the idea of a metaverse might be something that would be much more akin to a shared commons, something that was more like the open internet. And those differences really matter, um, both not only in terms of their implications for the future, but for questions of, you know, what kind of rights will we have in this new place? If the metaverse is going to fulfill its potential, we need to be calling much more forcefully for ways of co-building the metaverse. So effectively, if it's going to become an infrastructure that actually is conducive to human flourishing, then it needs to be a structure that we can build or co-code if you want. There's enormous value when we start thinking about the metaverse and what lies beyond what we're dealing with today. And that is people all over the world will be able to take advantage of new technologies so that they can live in that metaverse. They can own things that they've never been able to own before. They'll be able to create new businesses. So the technology will be there. The interactions will also be there. What might the future jobs be? What future skills will be required? Will we work in an office environment or will we work in the metaverse? And we just have to think through as this technology develops, what are the best ways for people to use the technology for positive impact? A lot of people talk about cartoon avatars. Other people talk about wiring in and brain chips. If you only ever see your Zoom or your, you know, your Zoom face with a filter on it, when you see yourself in the real world, in a, in a real mirror, you might start to feel really bad about how you look. I think the key here is that sometimes technology distorts reality. And I think that's actually one of the most important things and values of the metaverse as a terminology right now. It helps people imagine that this is going to be a place. And along with it being a place that you can go and inhabit and be embodied with in and be embodied with other people and socialize, and there's a whole lot of uh, interesting questions that come with places, like who controls the rights within that place? Who controls the ability to move between borders? That takes a, the development of social norms, uh, potentially new laws, regulation, um, new economics. And I think a lot of people are, are interested in trying to solve for the, these many, many issues. There are tools to try and initiate a shift in the huge imbalance of power between us individuals, internet users, and them data controllers. Now, I think that's an important role to play, but I resist the tendency that I, sometimes, I hear a bit too often, where some people then get carried away with the lure of those new technologies and think that that's the beginning and the end of an answer when it comes to the need to empower individuals and groups. And I don't think it's the end of the answer. It's the beginning, yes, but it also needs to involve people. So technology can't be the beginning and the end of that problem. It's only part of it. Which means that we'll have new technologies. They will definitely be more subtle than we're imagining them to be today. And I think 10 years from now, we're gonna look back at the 
depictions of the metaverse today and laugh. You know, they're going to feel really silly and dated, and we're going to look at ourselves and say, what were we thinking? One of the new emerging uh, media mythologies that we're seeing right now is this introduction into popular culture of this idea of not a metaverse, but the archetype of a multiverse. This uh, concept of a socio-cultural multiverse in which we're all starting to understand from an experiential standpoint that we all actually live in our own universe. And the, the story of trying to integrate this uh, kind of collective consciousness and be able to recognize this plurality of not only perspectives, but needs and uh, challenges is one of the biggest issues that we're trying to solve for. And I very much hope that in 10 years' time, there will be enough social pressure that the metaverse is something that we can all partake in as builders, not just consumers.